One of the greatest peacetime spy dramas in the nation's history reaches its climax as Julius Rosenberg and Morton Sobel, convicted of revealing atomic secrets to the Russians, enter the federal building in New York to hear their doom. Another of the spy ring, Mrs. Ethel Rosenberg, who with her husband was convicted of actually transmitting the secrets to Russia through Soviet diplomatic channels. On June 19, 1953, Julius and Ethel Rosenberg were executed on the charges of conspiracy against the United States by secretly feeding nuclear plans to the Russians. The execution brought to a close the most controversial espionage case of the Cold War. Julius Rosenberg, the son of Jewish immigrants from the Russian Empire, grew up on the Lower East Side of New York. He had a normal American upbringing until he went to the City College of New York and joined the Young Communist League USA. During this time, the United States was enduring the Great Depression and so some Americans blamed the Depression on the United States' reliance on capitalism. So many socialists and communists began to form. Julius graduated from college with a degree in electrical engineering and joined the Army Signal Corps Engineering Laboratories at Fort Monmouth, New Jersey, and worked there from 1940 to 1945. He was fired when the U.S. Army found out about his former membership in the Communist Party. Ethel Greenglass grew up in Manhattan, New York with her brother David Greenglass. When she took a secretarial job at a shipping company, she became involved in labor disputes and joined the Young Communist League, where she met Julius in 1936. They later married in 1939 and had two sons together, Michael and Robert. During his time in the Army Signal Corps, Julius and Ethel began working together to pass information from the U.S. military to the Soviet Union. Later, David Greenglass, who was assigned as a mechanist for the Manhattan Project to build the atomic bomb, provided the Rosenbergs with data on nuclear weapons. The Rosenbergs passed their information to Harry Gold, a courier for espionage ring who then passed it to Anatoly Yakovlev, the Soviet Union's vice consul in New York. Fellow spy Harry Gold was arrested in 1950, and the arrests of Julius, Ethel, and David Greenglass quickly followed. During this post-World War era world, the Cold War was starting to heat up. As a result, the growing fear of communism began to emerge. This period of time from 1947 to 1960 became known as the Second Red Scare, or popularly named McCarthyism, after its most famous supporter, Senator Joseph McCarthy. McCarthyism contributed to the growing fear of Soviet espionage within the United States. The Rosenbergs were charged with espionage and brought to trial on March 6, 1951. Greenglass was the chief witness of the prosecution. On March 29, they were found guilty and later sentenced to death via electric chair. All over the world, especially in western cities, they protested the execution of the Rosenbergs. The trial of the Rosenbergs created mixed reactions among the American public and other countries. However, Due to the growing fear of communism, many civil rights groups refused to support the campaign that their execution was a violation of their civil rights. Many Americans who were politically left-wing believed the Rosenbergs were persecuted merely for their involvement with the Communist Party in the past. Their legal team worked to have the verdict repealed, but their hopes failed. Neither President Truman nor President Eisenhower granted requests to remove the death sentence. I can only say that by immeasurably increasing the chances of atomic war, the Rosenbergs may have condemned to death tens of millions of innocent people all over the world. I will not intervene in this matter. The sentence of the trial shows how McCarthyism contributed to this case. If the second Red Scare had not occurred, the trial would not have been as highly publicized as it had been. Therefore, the people would not have had as much a say in what happened to the Rosenbergs. The government wanted to put an end to the trial in order to relax some of the communist fear so the execution of the Rosenbergs was decided. On June 19, 1953, the Rosenbergs were executed in Sing Sing Prison. The Rosenbergs were the only two American civilians to be executed for espionage-related activity during the Cold War. In 2001, David Greenglass confessed that he gave false testimony to protect his wife, even going as far as stating his wife was more important to him than his mother and sister. It was revealed that the prosecution had distorted testimonies in 2008. The prosecution had written that she typed out plans for the atomic bomb when she only wrote information down on a piece of paper and gave it to her husband. The prosecution used Greenglass's testimony to convict the Rosenbergs of espionage. 
However, according to the defense's cross-examination of Greenglass, it is revealed that Greenglass lied to protect him and his wife. Later in 2001, David Greenglass revealed that he did indeed lie in his testimony to protect he and his wife. Block was fighting against a jury who had already made up their minds. The jury was influenced by the media highly publicizing the trial and the people who feared Soviet espionage. In 2015, on the 100th anniversary of Ethel's birthday, the New York Council issued a proclamation saying the government had wrongfully executed Ethel Rosenberg. The young sons, Michael and Robert, were not adopted by any of the relatives following the parents' execution. They ended up being adopted by two former members of the Communist Party. To this day, they continue to fight for their parents' innocence. Many people still believe that the Rosenbergs were not guilty. Today, it is widely agreed that the couple did not deserve the harsh death sentence. But it is still unknown to what extent the Rosenbergs were truly involved in the espionage during the notorious Cold War.